Welcome to an introduction to accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. In this podcast, we are going to look at cost, volume, profit analysis. We shall look at the theory in this podcast and then look at a worked example in the next podcast. Our earlier podcasts were concerned with financial accounting relating the accounting to reporting for external interests. Cost volume profit analysis is a part of managerial accounting. Managerial accounting is concerned with providing information that is of particular use within a business. It is used for decision making, for planning and control and for performance evaluation. For cost volume profit analysis we need to understand what we mean by the terms. Profit has already been dealt with in financial accounting and you will remember the difference between gross profit and net profit. By volume we refer to the number of units of a product made for manufacturing industry or the quantity of a service provided for a service industry or the number of times a process is repeated for some other industries. Costs are incurred in carrying out business, and this podcast distinguishes between those costs that are fixed relative to the volume of activity, those that may vary according to the volume of activity, and those that are semi-variable. Three important applications for cost volume profit analysis are the determination of break-even point, determination of margin of safety, and determination of target profit. With a fixed cost, the level of cost remains the same regardless of the volume of activity. If plotted as a graph, the result is a straight line parallel to the horizontal axis. In contrast, for a variable cost, there will be a line that slopes upward. The line will always pass through the origin, since if there is no quantity produced, there cannot be a quantity associated with it. Notice this differs from fixed costs where a cost is incurred even if no production is taking place. The slope of the line will vary for variable costs, it may not even be a straight line. Fixed costs as total fixed costs give a horizontal line. There are exceptions to this. It is possible to have unit fixed costs that decrease proportionately with the level of activity within a relevant range. Let us recap and put some of these ideas together. We will assume the business has unit fixed costs and these are going to be plotted as a graph. We start with a horizontal line. The fixed costs are represented by OF. As an aside here, there could be a case where there were stepped fixed costs. If premises are rented and rent is a fixed cost, then consider what happens when the capacity of the building is reached. More space needs to be rented and this will increase the fixed costs the fixed cost will remain the same until this capacity is reached, at which point further space must be rented. This gives rise to stepped fixed costs. In contrast, our variable costs were represented by a slope which passes through the origin. Here is our second aside. We can have what are called semi-variable costs. Suppose that we consider electricity in a large supermarket. There will be an element of consumption that is fixed, such as the power required to keep all fridge and freezer units running and maybe a controlled temperature in some spaces. There will also be a variable element, the lighting used when the store is open, any additional heating when the store is open. Added to that, there can be further costs if appliances are used for baking on the premises, for roasting chickens on the premises and any other such activity. By plotting a graph of volume of sales against cost, we find the best fit line will meet the vertical axis at a point F. The distance OF represents the fixed cost element. That is fine, but let us return once more to our horizontal line for fixed costs, which we have shown here. This time we are going to add the variable costs. So we are starting our line for variable costs at the point where the fixed cost line meets the vertical axis. To make it clear, we have shaded in the rectangle to show the fixed cost element here. 
The shaded triangle shows the part of the total cost that is due to the variable costs. Cost volume profit analysis implies that we are looking for a point where a profit is made. We call the break-even point the point at which the company covers its costs. At this point there will be no loss and there is no profit. Profit and loss can both be considered to be zero. For each unit of sales beyond this point there will be a profit. Each unit of sale will increase the profit by a particular amount. This amount is referred to as the contribution margin per unit. The contribution margin per unit is the selling price less the variable costs. We now add the line to show total sales revenue. Notice that it intersects the line that represents the total costs. It is at the point that it intersects that is called the break-even point. To make this clear we have shaded two triangles. The red triangle represents the amount by which total costs will exceed total sales revenue for a range of volume of activity. Clearly in this region there is a loss. The blue triangle represents an area where the total sales revenue will exceed the total costs. This represents the area where profit is made. Costs then can be classified into groups as follows. Fixed and variable costs, direct and indirect costs, and product and period costs. Any cost will have at least one of these classifications attached to it. For example, the salary of a supervisor is usually fixed, direct, and considered as a product cost. Now we have a picture of what cost volume product relationships involve, it is time to see how we might use this information. We can determine the number of units that need to be sold to reach the break-even point. We can determine the number of units that must be sold to reach a desired profit. We can also determine the effect on profit if the selling price is reduced and more units are sold. We can determine the sales volume that will be required to meet any additional fixed charges. These are all useful pieces of information for management. Based on the assumption that all costs are linear, the net profit is equal to sales less variable costs less fixed costs. In the formula shown, x is equal to the number of units sold. So NP equals PX minus VX minus FC. The contribution margin per unit equals the fixed costs plus profit divided by the number of units to be sold where the selling price is the contribution margin per unit plus the variable cost per unit. Finally, if fixed costs alter, then the additional sales in units to cover the change is given by the additional fixed costs divided by the contribution margin, margin per unit. This ends our first podcast on cost volume profit analysis, brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For further information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.